Um, yeah, I'm going to be taking you through uh, some of our uh, site standards that we've been applying to our um, construction sites over the past, um, just coming up for 10 years. So our, our first site standards were piloted back in 2008. We were Bovis Len Lease back then. Um, lots of blue around the place. So I can't laser it, but yeah, lots of blue. Um, what's interesting is over that period of time, obviously we still have sheds from 2008, of course we do, that are still exactly the same standards. So even as our standards have kind of rank, um, cranked up and increased in places, there are still lots of things about the, uh, our sheds that aren't really changing. So um, some of that obviously is a bit disappointing, but we've got to keep, keep the pressure on. Um, our st standards are split into two parts for practicality. So we have a number of minimum standards, and I'll, I'll quickly tell you a couple of them. But um, the ones that specifically relate to our site accommodation, um, our sheds, really are around things like making sure we have water efficient toilets and taps and those kinds of things, which um, the building standards, building codes are, are greatly improving themselves. Um, one of the other ones is door it closes on external swing doors. So, you know, we see a massive energy waste in having doors wide open with the air conditioning blaring away. Um, and what we find with a lot of our site sheds is there's no ownership. It's not somebody's space. It's like somebody turns the air on, they go off and disappear and do something else. No one thinks, oh, I'll turn that off and shut the door. So at the very least, door closes for us are an important thing. Um, and really, that's about the only ones that relate to the site shed themselves. The others are really minimum st standards and behaviours that we expect of our staff. Things like um, uh, minimum four-star TVs and fridges and two-star fridges and things that they put inside those sheds. Then we have a huge list, as long as your arm, of optional initiatives that we would like our sites to, um, to look at. And these are not mandatory. This is where we put in place the things that separate one project from another. And this is where we ask our shed suppliers to provide things like more energy efficient air conditioning, better quality lighting, sensors, um, uh, water tanks, these kinds of things which actually relate to the, the structure and construction of the, of the sheds themselves. We have a rating scheme where we, um, I'll touch on that next actually, um, we, we, we have 12 elements to our sustainability uh, framework within Lendlease that we apply to all our projects. So we've looked at how we can apply those same 12 elements to our site accommodation as well. So there's the obvious things around resource use, energy, water, the waste that we're generating on site, the impact that we're having on the natural environment on, in our sites. Um, but we also try to encourage improvements in worker welfare, things like the health and well-being of the space that they're working in, um, the diversity of the team, you know, trying to encourage, this is where things like our Indigenous workforce participation sits, um, and any kind of programs we have to um, increase training and skills and employ employment within our construction workforce. And then we also encourage our sites to build around community involvement. You know, are they, um, are they uh, creating partnership supply kind of relationships with local coffee shop and printing firms and these kinds of things that we like to promote? Are they um, creating kind of charitable uh, activities? We have a community day every day, and so we ask for our site teams to say, well, which, which community day did you support this month, uh, this, this year? Um, so that gives our sites a rating, um, out of, and there's probably about 80 or 90 initiatives or points on that, that big list. And so any team that's sort of hitting about um, 50, 60% of those, we're saying, okay, well, you're a, you're a platinum site, you're really giving this a, a red hot go. Um, all the way down to a bronze level, if they're not really you know, targeting anything, um, then yeah, they're gonna be in those lower levels. When we looked at some of the things that we like the ACA standard to start to mandate, um, it probably sits us at around a silver site shed. You know, like if we just had the supplier come and give us all the right things straight out of the box and our site team did nothing, we'd be up at the 25, kind of 30 points, and then our sites would, would add their activities beyond that to, to lift their rating. So we have lots of teams that are up at the kind of platinum level, and they're really kicking the, um, you know, knocking the lights out. Um, then there are other teams that sort of say, look, I'm in and out, I'm only gonna be here a short period of time, I'm really gonna be a bronze or a silver mat, you know, get off my back. Um, so, you know, we, we find there's a natural competition between our teams. What we found with all that kind of natural resource and the kind of checklist, 
was that it was great for driving kind of sustainable outcomes, but it wasn't really getting to the nub of what we're finding with our workforce, which is the kind of working conditions we're asking our site teams to work in. You know, at the time we were transitioning from a great office here at 30 The Bond in uh, uh, Hickson Road. We were going into the new towers at Barangaroo. We were ourselves um, asking our employees to be more agile and work in um, a kind of reduced desk count, but a space that was much more uh, adaptive to the way people wanted to work. So we thought, well, if our next place for our head office is a different standard, we should also be asking our sites, what's your next site office going to look like? Which is how we developed our next place site office standard. So we have a number of principles with our next place um, designing our new workspace. The first thing was around health and well-being. We wanted to ensure that we had a platinum rated site shed that really focused on the health and well-being initiatives. The specific ones around low VOC paints, um, natural lighting, uh, things like carpet on the floor, which we, you know, low VOC carpet, which we think is a great thing for thermal comfort for our workers. Um, so those are the kinds of things that we thought were a bit of a given. Um, the workplace design itself, so how will we laying out workstations, how will we laying out offices, and you'll see a huge difference. Um, we, we found an interesting mentality with our sites where, um, on the one hand, they were being encouraged to reuse waste furniture. There's loads of offices that are tearing out all these 80s workstations, the big, do you remember the, the kind of quarter ones where you were down behind a partition and you never saw the people around you? They're spatially inefficient. And yet our site teams were saying, I'm doing a good thing, I'm reusing a work desk, you know, don't, don't be on my case. Um, but they actually created these really kind of inefficient workspaces. What we found in our head office, uh, through the technology that we're applying to our offices now, we're, we're really reducing the amount of paper that people are using. And yet on sites we were seeing these massive 80s workstations, people just had more space to pile things. And so it was, it was really interesting, you give people space, they fill it. So what we found a big step with our next place site office was getting rid of that old furniture um, and giving them like really high quality workplace designs. Spaces where they could break out and meet informally um, was a big thing for us. So um, what we'd found with site sheds previously was that you took a typical site shed, fill it up with people, then there'd be another site shed for meeting in, then there'd be another site shed with the boss in, you know, like it was really um, dis, dis kind of joint, jointed. And we found by having larger kind of workspaces that people could work in, in a kind of less hierarchical way, we got the construction manager out on the same team tables working with everyone else. It really starts to break down some of that cultural hierarchy, which um, we've, we've probably all as corporate office workers broken down through open plan working over the last 10 years, but we haven't seen in construction sites. They're still working in very cellular kind of office and hierarchical structures. Um, we've put a lot of technology into our sites, lots of Wi-Fi, lots of um, you know, smart, smarter computers. These kinds of things are really important. Um, and what we've, another cultural piece that we're really trying to challenge is workplace flexibility. There's a real kind of um, cultural construction managers, older male guys that expect all their, their, their engineers to be bums on seats. You know, like if I can't see them, they're not doing work. And so what we're trying to do with some of this next place office design as well is um, say, well, if people can work more flexibly, they can, you know, uh, be working out on the construction site with their tablet, they can come in, you know, they can share workstations. It allows us to then use the space more in a more agile way to create breakout spaces where people can work, lay out drawings in a kind of a combined meeting space. They may not always be in their seat. And so that's, that's a kind of challenge to the flexible way in, in which we use our site offices. And then uh, in, going back to Lindsay's point earlier about precinct, what can we provide as a whole site compound shared facilities that really add to the uh, level of, of, of workplace provisioning we're giving to our, to our workers to say, you guys are just as valuable to us, if not more valuable on our project sites than we are in head office where we've got the cafe and the, 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 you know, these kinds of features that are, that are more precinct um, focused. So at Barangaroo, we actually had a medical facility on site where we had a, like a full-time nurse that was providing health checks. Um, we're seeing more uh, training uh, 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 facilities on site, so the Brangaroo Skills Exchange where construction workers could drop in and actually update their training um, on wet days and, and these kinds of um, provisions. And we're also seeing more, um, and, and, and the big engineering projects will see this, like canteens with, with, with kind of better quality healthy food, not just the, you know, the pie and chips that usually gets rolled in. <coughs> so um, Lindsay showed a photo of our first um, next place site office, which was up at Williamtown Air Base for, um, for Defence. 
So this is, um, this is a site office that accommodates about 80 workers in a large open plan space that's about 30 metres by 50 metres. And what we found by accommodating them in this one big space, we could actually drop about 30% of the number of sheds we would normally provide um, off. So that has helped to um, fund some of the improvements in the finishes and the quality of, of, uh, of uh, construction. So we wanted to try and find a shed provider that could perhaps build us a facility to meet these standards, but in the end it just wasn't practical and we actually built in situ a building that will be there for about six years with the levels of insulation that you would have of, of, a, more tempor of a more permanent constructed building. So um, the, this is where we're going to. We're seeing these mammoth projects that, are, that need these kind of large open plan professional spaces that uh, modular buildings can't necessarily get to unless they are rethought. Lots of plants, we've got a green wall in there, um, big central green wall space. Lots of colour on the walls, that's the thing we're trying to encourage our teams. Um, there are kind of a rule of thumb I've been trying to say to my sites is, um, I, I want to see three C's. I want to see carpet, I want to see colour, and I want to see a clear line of sight through your space. Because those are the things that are really making these, these, uh, these, this accommodation feel different. Um, this is another site. Uh, these are actually rented Osco sheds down at the um, Hats Air Base, uh, down at uh, Nara. So that was a project that we did down there. Um, <coughs> these Osco sheds had, you can see this kind of, this is a real bugbear for me, I apologise, but this grey vinyl is soul destroying. It really is. Like, it, it makes you feel depressed. And, and I, I think that's the one thing that we could ask of our providers is the ability to have more human kind of white walls. And so what, what we've tried to ask on some of our projects is what would it take for us to, to, to have white instead of grey? Like how hard would that be? Um, and we do find that we are getting hit with these kind of make good where like we might um, you know, pay to make the walls white but then pay to put them back to grey again. And it, it, and it really frustrates us and that's something that we want to work with industry to try and change because we strongly believe that once we adapt a space like this into a, a work into an office space with a higher quality finish, we struggle to see how that somebody else won't value that next. But we do hear the message that these will get downgraded back again to a common or garden, rubbishy kind of shed. And so that's, that's the bit that we're a bit confused by. So um, what I found really interesting with the HATS example down in Nara, the site team there, um, we were developing this next place site office standard they only received it three days before they, they received their OSCO sheds. And so they didn't really get a chance to think about how they were going to design them. They just got these new standards. And overnight, they completely relayed out and thought about how they were going to do things. And one thing that I was really impressed with was that they kind of painted over that those sheds had a kind of marigold yellow kind of magnolia yellow kind of panel. And so they said, no, 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 no. And they, they painted those white. And they've kind of taken the punt on whether the four years that they've, they've had them at Hats and then they've removed them to um, our next project, whether somebody really will charge us the make good. Maybe we did get charged, I don't know. But, um, but really, the, the space was lifted overnight from what was an existing yellowy kind of box with these, these uh, four-way corner workstations and lots of piles of paper, and they moved them from one site to the next, and they just, within a few days, they had sit-to-stand workstations, long team tables, um, carpet on the floors, this beautiful joinery, which, you know, we need the joinery anyway, why not put some kind of interest and life into it? The plants that they hired, they built these shelves for a kind of cheap green wall out of um, old formwork. Um, and the construction workers on site can do that. So it's really interesting that they kind of knock this together. We've seen a massive theme of plants on our construction sites. It's like once they have them, they don't want to not have them again. And it's, it, it's really great to see. Once they've had one site that had green, green walls and plants, they just want it in the next one. So the same team that built those formwork ones, they're now at a job up in Parliament House where they've built the same formwork green wall. It's going to be their thing. They're just going to keep building them. And that's fantastic, you know. Um, we had one green wall on our NAC project that sadly, this one was like an experimental hydroponic kind of wall that died. And I, I wasted a lot of money on that one. Um, and I said to the team, I'm sorry, I can't buy your replacement. Like You've used all my innovation budget. And they said, that's all right, we'll just rent one. And they've actually gone back, and I don't know if I've got a photo of it, I probably don't. But they've rented their own wall to replace the one I gave them. And that's just so great because they'll just, I just know they're going to keep doing that now. This team here, you know, they kind of went, rented these plants and it's fantastic. Um, colour, this, this idea of um, you know, putting up 
This is a wall that we've painted down at um, ANU. I don't know whose wall that is, um, but you know we'll probably get pinged for that at the end of the job as well. But you know who cares? We've got it for four, three or four years or whatever. It's going to be yellow for that duration. Um, when we first got site teams to lay out these, the engineers to lay out these new offices, they did everything black and white because they really didn't think it made a difference. You know, like we actually had one project. I think it was a NAC project. We had to plead with a supplier to take back all the old black chairs and replace them with colored ones. I think they're these colored ones here, possibly. Um, they just bought black ones because they just went, well, the engineers were just in black chairs. They, they, made, they bought these black ones they didn't want them to. Um, and we begged them and they said, all right, you haven't even unwrapped them. We'll let you have the colored ones. And it, like, overnight, it just lifted the space. And it just goes to show that you know, architects know what they're doing. Designers know what they're doing. So you know, we've, we've had some teams get really brave with these orange benches now in the kitchen. And you know, we've seen it out here, but we're seeing it down at Parliament House, more graphics and things printed on, on glass just to sort of lift the space and give it a bit of color. So um, lots more technology on sites. We're seeing sort of projectors, video conferencing, screens. You know, like, you know, we're lifting the standard. And I think the sheds kind of are the start of that. You know, they, if, you, if you can't really change the shed, you need to change everything in it. And then it starts to show the sheds up a little bit. So um, they're on our hit list. And that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>